Hello people of the internet, this video is gonna be about task automation technologies that require no or low programming skills. So if you've been looking to introduce automation at a personal level or in big organizations, stick around because we'll be covering both cases. At the end of the video, you will know which technology fits your needs better. Knowing that is critically important given that you can't change your mind later on. You either keep building automation with the platform you've chosen or you start from scratch with a different provider. Okay, so without further ado, the first product I'm gonna be comparing is Zapier. You've probably seen this one in social media. They're all over TikTok. Instagram and they're targeting pretty much anyone, you know, lawyers, accountants, entrepreneurs in general, non-technical individuals. The second technology that I've chosen today, you've probably not heard about. This one is called Google Application Integration. This one feels pretty much dedicated to cloud administrator and software engineers with some low-code, no-code components. It's a very interesting mix between both worlds. Uh, Google's application integration is only available through Google Cloud Platform. So it's not available as a standalone product. And the third one is called Microsoft Power Automate. So Microsoft has been targeting businesses of all sizes with their Power Automate, Power Apps, and Power Platform family of products, where the main focus are those people that have to work with Office on a daily basis, as well as software developers and people with multiple years of experience in the tech industry. The important about this one is this is for corporate environments only. So you cannot sign up for Microsoft Power Automate on your own. So I know so far these technologies sound very different from each other. So it makes sense to start with the similarities. Automations are represented by diagrams with each step of the automation represented by a box in the diagram. So here I have a basic example of an automation that sends an email. First, it sets up the recipient in the body of the email, adds an attachment, and finally sends email. Progression goes from top to bottom. Commonly, the first step in the automation is called a trigger. Triggers come in three flavors. The first is the manual trigger. The automation starts with the click of a button. The second is the schedule trigger, which makes the automation run in a timely manner. For example, the first and 15th of every month. And the third one is the event-based trigger. So this makes the automation start after a predetermined event, such as a new email coming in or a new row being added to an Excel document. All the boxes below the trigger are known as automation steps or simply just actions with actions on top passing information to those down below. At any point during your automation, you might have if statements, switch case statements, for loops, try catch blocks. And finally, you can decide if you want to respond by sending information back to the source or sending the output through email, Slack, or saving it to a document, whatever you may need. Common type of actions that you can have in your automations are, for example, download an attachment from an email, add a new row to an Excel document, send an email with an attachment, upload or download files from Google Drive or OneDrive, post a message on Slack, request authorization from the manager, request a signature on a document, run a transaction in SAP, and reply to an email. So you can see how by putting together one trigger and multiple actions, you can automate a process that would take some minutes and maybe even hours if done manually. Okay, so once again, the technologies that I'm gonna be comparing are Microsoft Power Automate, Google's application integration, and Zapier.com. And the categories are gonna be the overall complexity of each platform, the flow design experience, the ecosystem that the vendors have built around them, and exclusive features of each technology. Okay, so if we talk about complexity or the lack thereof, definitely my favorite is Zapier.com. The interface is so intuitive and easy to pick up and understand that it makes it perfect for people without any technical background whatsoever. So automations in Zapier are called SAPs. And when you start a SAP, you're prompted to select a trigger and one action. As soon as you click either the trigger or the action, the interface makes it very clear that you're expected to select an online platform such as Gmail, Google Sheets, and etc. And that's where your data will come from, or the events are going to come from. Let's talk about application integration. It's very different from Zapier. Application integration is Google Cloud's system for integration of enterprise application. The interface may not be as colorful as 
this appears, and for sure it is not as intuitive, but there is documentation available in case you get stuck along the way. Okay, this is the workflow building interface, what I've been referring to as workflows and automations. Here are called integrations, and here you've got your list of triggers and the actions. Authentication with third-party services and Google's own services goes through authentication profiles, where you're expected to provide SSH keys, so it feels a little bit more complicated than it has to be, especially compared to Zapier and Power Automate, where you just log in with your current account, click authorize, and off you go. Back in application integration, the list of third-party services that you can integrate with out of the box is quite small, but this is expected given that the product is relatively new in Google Cloud. Okay, now let's talk about the flow design experience. Here, Power Automate and Zapier.com require placing actions in predefined positions and locations throughout your flow. So it makes it very obvious to understand the flow of information. Whereas application integration feels pretty much like using a diagramming tool where you can have one too many relationships between your actions and you can build a layout however you want. So to summarize this category, the most user-friendly flow design experience is available in Zapier.com again. And the most flexible is Google's application integration. Okay, now let's talk about the ecosystems that these technologies are part of. So Google and Microsoft have spent decades and billions building their cloud ecosystems. Therefore, many of the products of those ecosystems will show up in their automation technologies. Whereas for Zapier.com, it feels more like the strategy is implementing as many third-party services as they can instead of building their own ecosystem. What I mean is database services, AI services, data processing, infrastructure as a service. These are all type of services where Google and Microsoft have significant trajectory, where Zapier.com is not expected to compete. So when it comes to application integration, other GCP products that you will find are PubSub, Vertex AI, Dataflow, Firestore, and even products from Google Workspace, such as Google Drive and Google Sheets. For Power Automate, integrations available out of the box are Azure Key Vault, of course, Microsoft Entra ID, previously known as Azure Active Directory. You can authenticate access to Power Platform services using SPNs or service principles. You can connect to most of the services of Microsoft 365, previously known as Office, including, of course, Excel and Excel Online, OneDrive, and last but not least, you can trigger automations on Windows machines using RPA. So let's talk about those exclusive features in the next category. So out of all the features available in these three automation platforms, I think one of the most important, if not the most important, is Power Platform's capability of automating tasks in Windows machines. So let's make an example. Imagine the following scenario. Every day you get in your email a list of people that left the company, and your job is to delete or deactivate their accounts in SAP. In Power Automate, you can create an automation without code that starts every time you receive such email, opens SAP and logs in with your username and password. It then browses to the user management transaction to finally find and deactivate the user. And again, all you need to do is record your steps once and the automation will play it back every day. Silly examples like that may not sound worth automating, but when someone is having to do that every day, month after month, year after year, it ends up affecting employee satisfaction. And of course, those people can be assigned to do something more productive. Similarly, removing human error from the equation will definitely prevent some headaches around the office. So being able to automate tasks in Windows machines as well as platforms on the cloud is a big plus for Power Automate. In Zapier.com and Google's application integration, you don't have that flexibility. Neither of the two offers RPA technologies, in which case you would have to license those technologies from a third party such as UiPath and connect them as you would with any other service. So it works, but they're not part of the same family. So this is a category where 
Power Automate is far ahead of the competition. One feature that is available in Zapier.com that I think it's very cool is a tool called Transfers. It's basically a two-step process where you select where your data is and where you want your data to go. And the list of integrations is in the thousands. And this is the main factor in favor of Zapier.com. They have integrations with thousands of third-party services, more than Power Automate, and by a long shot, more than Google application integration. Okay, to wrap up, final recommendations. Use Zapier.com if your workflow involves primarily online software as a service platforms such as email, spreadsheets, file storage, instant messaging such as Slack, and you're not paying for Microsoft 365 already. Also consider using Zapier if you often find yourself having to migrate data across online platforms, also known as software as a service. If your organization is now in the hundreds and maybe even thousands of employees and you need automation, your workflows involve cloud products as well as Windows automation, definitely go with Power Platform and Power Automate. I'm 100% sure you will not regret making that decision. And if you have a team of developers, maybe you also have quite some microservices already deployed to Google Cloud. And all you're looking for now is bootstrapping your architecture in a visual and quick way, then definitely go with Google's application integration. Okay, so that's what I had for you guys today. Hope you find it useful and informative if you've made the decision of introducing automation in your workflows. I hope you found some answers in this video. So if you can, drop a comment down below and let me know what kind of processes you want to automate from your day-to-day -day work because there might be some very interesting use cases. Okay, so that's what I have for you guys today. Talk to you next time. Bye-bye.